Hey you, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. It is Friday afternoon, we have some beautiful natural light streaming in, and I wanted to sit down and have a story time with you guys about what I recently went through. I had a fibroadenoma, which is a benign breast tumor that commonly occurs in young women because of reproductive hormones and I had one in my right breast and a week and a half ago I underwent surgery to remove my tumor and I want to share my story with you because when I found out I was freaking out but watching the very few videos available on YouTube really helped calm my nerves so if you're going through the same thing I hope this will do the same for you and if you're not going through it then let this serve as a reminder to always be aware of your breast health to conduct regular breast checkups on yourself and also have them checked out maybe once annually and if you find something suspicious don't ignore it tell your doctor and get it checked out now let me backtrack a little bit to when all of this actually started. In November of 2019, I was just laying in my bed and watching TV or maybe doing something on my phone. When I started feeling around on my boobs, I had recently watched a video then about being aware of your breast health and giving yourself exams. And so I thought, why not? And I gave myself a breast exam and I found something that felt like a small um, rubbery like you know moving ball in my right breast at the time now before I get into that I want to give a quick disclaimer I'm not a doctor I'm not a medical professional at all this is me sharing my personal experience this should not be considered as medical advice or anything close to that when I found this I really wasn't freaking out a lot I just thought maybe it was my boobs doing their thing during that time of the month because throughout my cycle my breasts actually change they are firmer towards the beginning of my cycle sometimes they get like weird and tender around my period and so I wasn't too worried I thought it was just one of those things I did have a routine health appointment in like the next two weeks that was already set up and when I had this checked out by my doctor in New York City she asked me to go get an ultrasound which I was kind of like mm, I didn't think this would be anything but I guess an ultrasound isn't too bad. This was my first time getting any kind of medical test done and in New York City at that because if you don't know, I am from India. I've been in New York only for like four years now and I barely ever have had to get any kind of like medical procedures done. So this in itself was kind of unnerving for me, but I got the ultrasound and the doctor comes in with like a somber face and she goes, do you have any history of breast cancer in your family? And she's asking me all of these questions and I do have a history of breast cancer. My grandma actually got breast cancer at around the age of 65. Um, she's fine now, she is cancer free now. And so she asked me a couple more questions like that. And then she goes, what you have is a fibroadenoma, which is pretty common in young women. It's just like a mass that sometimes forms in breasts of young women because of reproductive hormones and now I know that not every tumor has to be cancer it can sometimes just be benign which means non-cancerous but back then just hearing the word tumor really really freaked me out because I was like this was just something I found casually on one day while checking my breasts and now they're telling me I have a tumor and I was freaking out and I was alone. She said that they use a BIRAD scale to classify tumors. Any fibroadenoma that is between a BIRAD 1 to 3, there is nothing to worry about. Doctors usually just ask you to maybe get a biopsy or just monitor it if there's no need to get one and see how it changes over time because sometimes fibroadenomas do shrink or go away with changes in your body like pregnancy etc but she said she classified mine as a BIRADS 4 which is suspicious of malignancy or cancer in other words and at this point I was like oh my god I did not know what I'm gonna do and the doctor recommended a core needle biopsy which is basically like a cylindrical needle that she wanted to put in my breast get a piece of this 
tumor in my breast so they could examine it to determine whether it was really a fibroadenoma and she was like when do you want to schedule the biopsy etc etc i did i just wanted time to kind of digest this information and so i was like i'm gonna let you know i walked out of there without giving her an answer about the biopsy i was scheduled to fly to india in 2019 a week after i saw the doctor and got this news and I was like, what if I get this biopsy and it's painful? I also wanted to just consult my doctor here in India before I make any decision to insert anything into my boob. And so I decided with my mom that I would wait till I came to India, which was like one or two weeks after. And when I flew down to India in December of 2019, I went to the doctor. He had me get another ultrasound. And this doctor who was an oncologist, said that he classified this tumor as a BIRATS3, which meant it was pretty small first off and I didn't need to worry about it. He just, he said there were no signs on the ultrasound that could point towards a malignancy. And so he advised that instead of doing a biopsy right away, I monitor it for six months to a year and see if anything changes, which I was very, very happy about because I did not want to have a biopsy. I didn't want to have a needle inserted into my boob. And I was really excited about not having to have a biopsy. So that's where we left that off in 2019. I did start taking some Ayurvedic medicine for this tumor in the meantime. And over a few months, I completely even forgot I had this thing. It didn't even feel like anything. Like if I touched my boob, it was there, but it wasn't like bothering me in any way. I didn't have any pain. It was a very tiny tumor, so it was, wasn't really affecting like the shape of my breast or anything. Until I came back to India, where I am right now. And on the 1st of June, 2021, I got my ultrasound again to have this tumor checked out. And I went to the same doctor here, the oncologist. So I had another ultrasound and he looked at it and he told me that the tumor had grown and initially it was 1.5 centimeters and now it was three centimeters and that he was not comfortable not doing about it anymore because first off doubling of the tumor in size in like 1.5 years was a little bit too fast and alarming and since i had a family history and the tumor was growing he advised that i should get it surgically removed by what's called a lumpectomy or a surgical excision of the tumor and my brain was like no not doing that no way <laughs> since a fibroadenoma is caused by reproductive hormones when you are closer to your period your estrogen levels vary and so that contributes to this tumor and so it directly affects it and so it's not out of the ordinary to feel a little bit of an increase in the size closer to your period but the doctor said he didn't think that it could vary so much so imagine this is my boob this is my areola the tumor was around here on the right side and I guess it was growing inwards and so what I was feeling on the outside was just the circumference which was feeling like smaller but in reality on the ultrasound it was pretty much the same size around three centimeters now the doctor said that he recommended removing this tumor surgically whether or not it was benign or cancerous because of the way it was growing and that in future it could get bigger and that would kind of affect like the shape of my breast maybe cause me some pain and because he was recommending that he said he didn't think that I should have a biopsy and you know may probably scar my breast and then have another surgery which would cause a second cut on my breast in the same area probably so he wanted to avoid two procedures when the recommended course of action would not change it was to remove this tumor at this point my brain is still freaking out number one and this may sound vain but i was very very worried about the scar that this would leave on my breast um, and how this would affect me mentally affect my body image and secondly because i didn't know if this was benign or malignant and that was a very scary thought we took a couple other doctors opinions in the next two days and decided it was wise for me to have it surgically removed. So once I decided I wanted to have the surgery, I had another uh, appointment with the actual doctor who would perform my surgery because my oncologist was not a surgeon. And so I met with the doctor that was gonna perform my surgery. He evaluated the tumor and he said that it felt 
like a benign fibroadenoma but he still also recommended taking it out and so we scheduled my surgery for a week almost a week after that date he explained to me that since the tumor was so close to my areola they would be making a cut on my areola a three to four centimeter cut and going in from there and removing it off the top of my breast instead of uh, cutting under or at the side and he said that this was also better because the areola is naturally darker compared to the surrounding skin and so six months to a year down the line the scar would very much be hidden for the week between this conversation and the date of my actual surgery i was an emotional wreck i cried so many times and i was freaking out about the scarring i was freaking out about surgery itself having someone cut into my breast. I also had to get a COVID test and a serology test a day prior to the surgery. And so I got those tests done the previous day. Then we get to my actual day of surgery. It is 6 a.m. on the day of my surgery and I am honestly freaking out to be honest. I'm just gonna try and, you know, stay calm and not think about it too much but we're supposed to be at the hospital in about an hour and the surgery is at 11 a.m so wish me luck i was up at like 5 a.m freaking out we get to the hospital at like 7 30 we finish all the formalities and then it's just like a two three hour wait before my actual surgery and it was kind of annoying because i was so nervous at this point i just wanted to get it over with they did explain the entire surgical procedure i also met with the anesthesia team because they were going to give me general anesthesia which was just putting me under putting me to sleep so i wouldn't be awake at all throughout the procedure at around 11 a.m i was wheeled into the operating room they're trying to have small talk with me when I was like freaking out. I appreciate they were probably trying to just distract me. And then the anesthesiologist comes in and she spoke to me about what it's gonna be like when they give me the anesthesia, that it would hurt a little bit. I found a vein here on my on the back of my palm and put in the needle there. And that's where she in, ended up injecting the anesthesia. And when she did this, it actually really hurt, which was strange. At this point, having the anesthesia already injected into my body, she said that it would start working in like a minute or two. And I had still not seen the surgeon. And so I was like, why is everything is happening so quickly? Like, I just, can we just like pause for a second? They put in like an oxygen mask on my face and I was asked to like breathe in and relax. And that is the last thing that I remember. I was, was knocked out after that. They went ahead with the surgery, which lasted for about 45 minutes. The doctor also kept my mom updated throughout the surgery. My mom was outside waiting for me. He also walked out with the actual tumor and showed it to my mom and my mom clicked pictures of it for me to see but it all went pretty smoothly. The surgery ended at 12 and after that, I only remember waking up really, really hazy, really, really groggy. And I had no pain in like the breast area. It was covered up with like a big plaster, just like this size. I had a lot of pain in my throat. I had trouble like swallowing my own saliva, which I now know was from the tube that they inserted while i was in surgery because of the general anesthesia that is what caused like the irritation in my throat which lasted for a lot of days and they did monitor me for 30 to 45 minutes after i woke up in the pre-op area uh, that's when i actually met the surgeon he told me that they made a three centimeter cut on my areola and that he extracted the tumor pretty pretty well and also didn't have to move around too much of the breast tissue so it really wouldn't affect my the, the shape of my breasts or anything but he seemed pretty confident that it looked like a benign fibroadenoma and he told me that which was a big relief at the time after that i was shifted to the general ward this lumpectomy surgery was a minor procedure and so they did tell me that if i was feeling good and if i was reacting normally and not having any like weird reactions nausea or anything to the anesthesia that they'd given me post-surgery that i would be discharged from the hospital the same day before the surgery i was asked not to eat or drink anything not even water from the night before and so at this point at 
like 1 1 30 after my surgery in the afternoon it had been I think 15 or 16 hours since I had eaten anything or even had a sip of water. So I was very, very hungry and very thirsty, but they didn't want to give me anything for at least three to four hours after surgery. And so I ended up having to just wait a little more. I was talking to my mom, I guess I said some gibberish because of the drugs. And then I was reading a book and in like three hours I kept like asking for food because I was so hungry other than the throat pain still like no pain the doctors even came in when I was in the ward and kind of just inspected the area dressing on the wound and told me that it was waterproof and that I could shower with it I didn't have to come in again until a week later to have it changed and to have the, the sutures or the stitches looked at. But three to four hours later, they started slowly giving me like liquids and then eventually food. And finally, I was let go from the hospital at around 7.30 or 8 p.m. in the night. My mom was with me throughout this whole process, which was such a relief i could have never done it without her and yeah that was pretty much it for the next week after the surgery i just rested by i think day three i was feeling almost completely normal other than the throat pain i had little to no pain on my surgery area throughout the week after my surgery which was very surprising because i was really really freaking out about the pain because it was covered i couldn't really see what it looked like which is the thing i was probably most worried about as to how big the scar would be etc and then I went in to see him again he changed the dressing and that's when I first saw my surgery scar and that's also the day that I got my biopsy results back and this ended up being a benign fibroadenoma which was such a huge relief for everyone we were just really really relieved that this was over and we wouldn't have to worry about it probably ever again one thing with fibroadenomas is that they do sometimes come back so I am asked to monitor my breasts every single month, give myself checkups every single month and also have biannual or annual ultrasounds just to be sure we can catch anything early if it ever happens again. I'm gonna manifest that it never happens again so I don't even want to talk about that. Lastly, I want to talk about the scarring because I know that if you're going through this that can probably be an area of concern. We are one and a half week after my surgery. I have now started working out. My breast does feel a little bit tender sometimes and it has, I have these tiny burning or like uh, poking sensations, but it isn't anything crazy or unbearable at all. The scarring though, it is looking a little bit nasty at this point. I know that it is pretty, pretty recent after surgery and so it's natural, it's normal to have uh, the scar looking bad. The stitches are still healing and the surrounding area around the scar is also pretty uh, bruised up and it's feeling a little hard at this time. I hope that like softens up over time. The doctor said that the scar should be completely hidden in like six months so I wouldn't even know. This was the best case scenario that happened for me and so I'm very very grateful that it all turned out okay and that was my story if you are going through the same thing and that is why you're watching this video i want to reassure you you're probably overthinking everything like i was it is not so bad the surgery itself is not bad at all you probably won't even know what happened to you while in surgery and the pain is really really minimal it's nothing to be scared of at all i really hope and pray if you're going through the same thing that you have support around you you have loved ones taking care of you and i do want to say again please please check your boobs give yourself routine breast exams just so if there is anything you can catch it early i did share a little bit of my story early on instagram if you're someone that follows me on there you probably know but so many of you guys sent me so many prayers and so many good wishes on there i guess they all worked and everything turned out okay and that's been my story this video is probably like 20 minutes long at this point so thank you so much for sticking around if you did take care of yourself good health is a blessing be grateful for it and i will see you guys in my next video bye